Today we're going to be chatting about five ways, count them, five, to use Google's natural language tool to make your content better. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dan. I have a 10 plus year SEO consultant and my goal is to help you do better SEO. Number one, if you're writing any sort of informational page about a topic, uh, and it's not salesy at all, we're talking straight content marketing and information, take the Wikipedia page of that topic or the closest related topic and try plugging it into this tool. Uh, you can see on my screen here, I've searched for Silver Coins Wikipedia. I've grabbed the information from the Silver Coin Wikipedia page. This is, again, I, uh, this is assuming I want to write some sort of content that's maybe a guide to silver coins or covers the history or the background. You're going to plug that into the tool. So you just basically take the text from the page you're analyzing and you're going to plug it right into the tool with copy and paste. You can see this is kind of a long Wikipedia page, but what you want to do is scroll down to where it pulls out the entities from this piece of content and scan through the entities for topics or things that you could potentially mention in your article. For example, I see a mention of Asia Minor. I see a mention of Alexander the Great, Ottoman Empire, Persia, silver bullion coins. You can scan down this list as long as you like. And of course, you want to be mindful to only consider including topics or entities that make sense for your content. But this is a great way to make sure you've covered your bases. This is not about getting the keyword sure sha shuri, that's a mouthful, into your content. This is about talking about a related topic or entity that Google and possibly users are going to expect to see if you write a piece of content around that topic. Tip number two, you can also find the highest ranked or some of the highest ranked pieces of content for something you would like to publish and rank for. Second example here is coin collecting for beginners. SmarterHobby.com is ranking with the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to U.S. Coin Collecting. And it's ranking number one. So it's not ranking number one by accident, or it's not ranking number one if it's a poor, not thorough piece of content. We can assume, hopefully, that it's ranking number one because Google has sort of analyzed it and users like it, and it mentions things that you would expect to hear in this piece of content. So I've plugged in coin collecting for beginners. This is a long piece of content. And scrolling down, and I, you know, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm not sure why this tool shows coins, 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 coins. I'm gonna dig into the specifics of that, but if we scroll down a little bit, we're seeing things like half dollar, error coins, uh, obviously collection. We're seeing assemblage, examples, the mention of a person. And now what's interesting is in this, spot number 42, Google has said George T. Morgan's important, but it also links to a Wikipedia article. So this is a strong, strong entity connection in my mind that Google has picked up upon because they are even linking to the Wikipedia page. Now, if we open that Wikipedia page, we can see this is an important person in the history and the background of coin collecting. So you would want to mention that person in your content. The third way you can use this tool is by using the sentence analyzer. You should be analyzing your sentences, your sentence structure, the words that you're using to make sure that it's clear and readable for the user number one, but also for Google and all bots reason being reason number two. And I wanna show you an example of how to not structure a sentence and how to structure a sentence. This is the search result for serotonin Definition. Now, I chose a definition search result because I think this can be very useful not only in structuring your sentences, but also making sure that your structure is clear if you want to rank as a featured snippet for definition searches or other types of commonly uh, returned snippet searches. So here's a result from VeryWellMind.com. Now, remember, this ranked on page one for a search of serotonin definition. So this looks like a pretty good article on serotonin in general, but if I was doing SEO for Very Well Mind, I would, I would have them put a clear definition on this page. They have a decent one here. So what I wanna do is pull out the definition they have. 
and we're going to plug it into the natural language tool. And what we're going to do is click over on syntax to see if this sentence that's defining serotonin is clearly structured. I'm not a rocket scientist when it comes to this, but what I can tell you is that, first of all, we can see by looking at this tool, it's a long sentence. That right off the right off the bat makes it a harder sentence, a harder thing for Google to understand. Number two, by these big, long, sweeping lines that we see, that is showing us that it's trying to relate a word that's in the beginning of the sentence all the way down to something that's in the end of the sentence. And, and to me, again, I don't know the full in-depth science of what's happening here, but that just shows that this is a hard sentence to understand. There's a lot of dots to connect. Uh, and even its use of parentheses, where it says the neurotransmitter serotonin, sometimes called 5-HT because of its chemical name, 5 hydro proxetamine is, what it should say is serotonin is. That way you have the subject and then is indicating the definitions coming right after that. But instead we get this sort of long-winded roundabout way of saying that. Let's compare that to what's ranking number one and interestingly what they're using in their meta description. This is the result of medicalnewstoday.com. They have the number one ranking for serotonin definition. I'm gonna pull out the first sentence of their meta description because I believe this is a very well, clearly structured sentence that defines serotonin. And again, we're gonna click on syntax and we can see right away, it fits almost within the size that this tool is, is giving us in this box here. It's a shorter sentence. And they're doing the recommended structure. Serotonin is. And then is is immediately followed by the definition of what it is. They're saying serotonin is a chemical. If you could even end the sentence there and, and it would be a complete sentence, that's a great beginning to a definition-oriented sentence. It's very clear. Serotonin is a chemical. And then they continue. That has a wide variety of functions in the human body. Perfect. Now, somebody that scientific might come along and pick that apart. They might say it's not detailed enough, but that's okay. You can fill in the details for the reader later on. Tip number four is an easy one. You can use this tool to check the categorization of your content. If let, we take an example, paleo diet for beginners, and I chose a result from Canadian Living that's ranking on page three. I threw it in the tool, and it came back and said it has a confidence of 0.94 that this is special and restricted diets and has a confidence of 0.55 that it's also in the category of food and drink. And you might say, well, that seems to make sense. It seems like it's categorized correctly. But then I want to take an example from Healthline, who has the number one ranking for the uh, Paleo Diet Beginner's Guide. I plugged their article into here, and it has a more split, a more even categorization. It has 0.79 for special and restricted diets and 0.77 for food and drink. What this is telling me, and this is very broad, but what this is telling me is perhaps the Canadian Living article is not covering enough of the aspects of food and drink when it comes to paleo for beginners. It is skewed maybe too far on the diet side. And again, this categorization and this tool analysis is not the only thing that's causing something to rank. So you wanna make sure to think critically about the results that you're seeing here, but this could be an indication to you or a cue to go back and look at your article if you were the one that wrote for Canadian Living and question if it's balanced enough and if it covers enough of food and diet. The fifth tip that I have for you, the fifth way to use this tool is to check the sentiment. Now, you could throw the entire article into the tool, but I'd recommend checking sentiment for a few key areas. The title, the first sentence, and the top heading on the page. I should reverse this around. Title, top heading, uh, the first sentence, and all of your subheadings that appear throughout the piece of content. Uh, I recommend doing this because I feel that sentiment has a strong uh, correlation to uh, something being click-worthy in the search results and then causing the user to want to stay on the piece of content as they find it and are scrolling through the page. So I picked out another example, how to stay motivated. Uh, I pick this search term because to me this search term represents something that the user is probably looking for something positive. 
when they're searching for this. They're looking for literally something that's motivational. Now, if you were to contrary and do this for a more health related term or financial, you might look for a more neutral sentiment because the user wants something that conveys uh, trust or security uh, or safety. But for a search term like how to stay motivated, you might look to write your titles and your copy to skew more towards having a positive sentiment. I've taken the result from Forbes, that's the number one ranking article, and plugged it into here. So the first thing we can do is take their title and plug it in. Again, I wanna see if the title has a more positive sentiment to it. So this time we're gonna click sentiment. I'd recommend against copying and pasting the entire article to then check sentiment because it takes a long time. So just do a few sentences at a time if you're analyzing for sentiment. So I plugged it in here and I can see that Forbes, <clears throat> Forbes's title does skew a bit more towards positive. It's in the positive range with a 0.3 score. Now what I wanna do is take their first paragraph because the first paragraph is probably gonna be the thing that's, go that's going to, uh, the first, the first paragraph is going to be the thing that the user is going to use to decide if they want to stick around on the piece of content. So what I've really noticed here is that the first sentence has a sentiment of 0.8. That's almost as high as you can get. A one is the highest sentiment. And it has a magnitude of 0.8. That means it has a strong, positive sentiment. So I find that to be very interesting. Now, finally, what I recommend checking is your, uh, your headings or the uh, different sections, like Forbes has what looks to be like a heading, although it's technically in a bold tag here, but you should check the sentiment of the, the headings or the sections that people are gonna be looking at as they scan. And again, I'm seeing a fairly strong positive sentiment for the first headline on the Forbes article, which says set a goal and visualize it down to the most minute detail. It comes in with a set positive sentiment of 0.5 with a magnitude of 0.5. Now again, you don't always need to go for a positive sentiment. A negative sentiment might be, or a neutral sentiment might be what you need to get users to want to click and read on the content. So know your audience, know the topic you're talking about and the emotional state that the user might be in as they're searching that topic. Okay, I hope you found these five ideas and tips for how to use Google's natural language cloud tool helpful. All right, everyone, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you go out there and do great things, experimenting and playing around with Google's natural language tool. Do me a favor, leave me a comment below and tell me how you have maybe used this tool. Give me a way that you have thought of to use the natural language tool that's not in this video. I'm gonna pick one of the best answers and share that in the next video with everyone. Uh, and until then, I will see you next time. Um, subscribe maybe? Or maybe not. See ya.